Here's an example where we're going to consider discrete time sampling and decimation. And here we have a discrete time signal and a Fourier transform looks like this. And in this case, the Fourier transform has components up to 3 pi on 4, so up to 3 quarters of the way up to pi. And of course, we know that in discrete time, the basis functions repeat, so it's repeated at 2 pi and 4 pi and so on. Okay, so sampling, we're going to consider this case of sampling at half the rate. So what that means is we're going to multiply by a series of delta functions which are spaced on the even values, 2, 4, 6 and so on. And that is going to pick out the elements on the even numbers, even time, even of, of discrete time n, and set the other values to zero in between. So this is our sampled waveform. Here. This one started at a half, went up by a quarter at a time, up to one and a quarter, and then went down um, by a quarter at a time. And now we've got this sampled version. So we're not getting this top peak one here, and we've got zeros in between, just because that was on an odd value of n. So what does that do in discrete time? Well, we've only got half the number of samples, so we're going to have half the height here. So our waveform in the frequency domain the signal is not going to be up to one anymore, it's going to be up to a half because we've only got half the energy. Uh, so that means we're looking at uh, up to here. And the other thing is we're going to be getting copies because the Fourier transform of the impulse train is also a uh, impulse train. Um, so this is still going to be this one except multiplied by a half. And this has gone out to three quarters here. So we're going to be getting this waveform here, but multiplied by a half, and um, also out on this side. I'm only drawing half of the, the, the positive side of the frequencies here. It's all mirrored on the negative side. I just don't have space on this piece of paper. Okay, so we've got this up to a half. So this is our original one being multiplied uh, by a half, um, but the We've got the copies now coming in, and the copies are going to be on pi now because we've we're taking every second sample. So now there's going to be a copy on pi because there was a delta function over pi. So here's the the copy coming in here uh, from our sampling, and I'm just drawing them lightly over the top here uh, for now because the overall function is the addition of all of these copies. So the overall function, which we can now draw, and this one's coming in here as well, uh, the overall function is the addition of these ones. So at this point here, between these values here, there's no other one, so it's down here. Then between these two values here, and this, for this range of omega, you've got this one plus this one and because that's a line a straight line going down that's a straight line going up uh, they will add together to give a horizontal line then again we've got no component through there other than the one that's centered on pi and then we've got these ones adding through here and again so we've got our waveform which looks like this so this is our Fourier transform of our sampled waveform and in this case because of the aliasing we're getting this straight line here and it means that we would not be able to use a low pass filter to recover our signal from our sampled version. Uh, there's going to be a, another component coming in from this one here uh, like this. So this is our Fourier transform of our sampled waveform. In this case there's aliasing and this has caused a distortion in the frequency domain. Now, what does decimation mean? It means, if we do it by a factor of two, it means compressing, getting rid of all of the odd values if we're doing it by two. So in this case, we're gonna have now everything compressed in the time domain. And so we have a signal that looks like this now uh, in the time domain. And because it's compressed in the time domain, we know that it's expanded in the frequency domain. So this is what decimation means. It means keep only keeping the, uh, in this case, if we're doing it by a factor of two, only keeping the even values. 
Okay, so this is compressed in the time domain, so it's going to be it's a compressed version of this, so it's going to be an expanded in the frequency domain. Okay, so now this one will be expanded by a factor of two. So this is all now stretched out by a factor of two. So this first peak will now be over two pi. And this peak is here. And where this is three quarters, it's now going to come down at one and a half. And this one is going to come down at a, a half. And over here to three and a half. And another one that's coming in here from being over 4 pi. And so our overall waveform now is a waveform in the frequency domain. Our Fourier transform is this function here, um, which is over the top of this. I have I've drawn a little bit odd wrong there. Just It's just the waveform that's the addition of those stretched out, expanded in the frequency domain function from the non-decimated frequency domain function. Okay, so this is sampling and decimation. Sampling puts copies in the frequency domain and decimation stretches it out because it's compression in the time domain.